Sigma Tiger all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? It's a mandatory trans class. It's transitory. We got deep fake honey pots and bird flu milk. <laughs> Welcome to the Sigma Tiger. Let's hop right in. Hope you all had a great weekend. But we got mandatory queer indoctrination at school. It causes a huge uproar. Anything mandatory usually does. Difficult for parents to opt their children out of the politically charged nonsensical course, as quoted. Let's uh, have a look. Schools across America many times are run by managers who come with baggage from the extreme left ideologies of higher academia. Their plans often include spreading those ideals to students, whether or not they or their parents want such indoctrination. But one such plan in a school in Minnesota has been taken down a notch, according to a new report from Matt Staver, Chief of Liberty Council. The dispute developed in uh, Osseo, Minnesota, where officials scheduled a gay pride indoctrination class for all students, prepared scripts from which teachers were to read word for word, under a scenario that required teachers to take part regardless of their religious beliefs and rights and more. And the district went out of their way to make it nearly impossible for parents to review the material or to opt their children out of the indoctrination, the report said. Uh, the push for the far-left agenda came from four radical school board members, Liberty Council reported the teachers were not allowed to opt out of teaching the LGBTQIA plus history and culture lesson. Uh, we refer to them here on this channel as ALTS, A-L-T as an alternative lifestyle to procreation. Um, yeah, the district deliberately made it difficult for parents to review the lesson materials in advance or opt their children out of a politically charged nonsensical course. Parents, in fact, had to apply for permission to see the materials, had to appear in person at the school, and had to document their identity, the report said. Very deterrent. Uh, the actual curriculum conflicted with science and used pop culture to push students to adopt fake pronouns and more. The lesson then encouraged students to take Sorry, encourage students to question their own sexuality, asking the children if they are confused about or curious about and questioning their sexuality, fitting within at least one of the Q categories in its length, lengthy acronym, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning, intersex, and asexual. Uh, they left out the 2S, which stands for two-spirit for the indigenous. Forgive them for that. Students were uh, to be told failure to embrace the ideology risked having their assignments labeled incorrect. But the Liberty Council notified the school district of its need to allow students, parents, and teachers to exercise their right to opt out of such ideologies. The district caved, and as a result of our work, more than 1,000 students were allowed to opt out of the indoctrination classes as just, at just one school. At another school, over 400 opted out. In fact, so many parents opted their children out of the lesson that schools had to open their cafeterias and auditoriums to accommodate the teachers and students who refused indoctrination. Well done. Congratulations. In addition, at least 500 other children did not attend school at all on the day of the instruction. For 25 years, WND has boldly brought to you the news, blah, blah, blah. So that's the, the, uh, the news story came from WND. So there you go. They're literally forcing this down your throat, okay? You can't go outside without seeing it all over the streets. You can't go to a uh, grocery store without having it at the aisle or the cashier. And it's enough is enough. We get it. You're here. You're queer. Good for you. Uh, we don't care. You know? Like, the only reason people care so much is because it's rammed into their face. Otherwise, just do what you do by yourself, in your bedroom, in your house, great, good for you, don't need a parade, swinging things around half naked. And those things are dildos. Department of Education's new Title IX rule, just as bad as expected, okay, what is, what is happening here? Title IX uh, was a rule that was written to guarantee safe spaces for women, basically. Uh, the Department of Education just released its Long-delayed Title IX rule, a rewrite of the 50-year-old civil rights law so vast that it promises to turn Title IX's guarantee of sex equality in education completely upside down. Title IX of the Education Amendments Act of 1972 is all of a single sentence. 
It simply bars sex discrimination in any federally funded education program. It does not matter how much federal funding a school or institution of higher education receives, and it does not matter whether such funding from the federal government is direct or indirect. So yes, even the vast majority of private schools must comply with the rule. But this simple long-standing prohibition on sex discrimination has been manipulated by the Biden administration to both undermine constitutional freedoms, like the freedom of speech, and erase the very women that Title IX was enacted to protect. The Department of Education has unilaterally expanded the prohibition against discrimination based on sex to include prohibition against discrimination based on sex stereotypes, sex-related characteristics, including intersex traits, pregnancy or related conditions, sexual orientation, and gender identity. Under the Biden administration's sweeping new Title IX rules, any K-12 school or institution of higher education that receives any federal funding would have to open girls' bathrooms, locker rooms, housing accommodations, sports teams, and any other sex-separated educational program or offering to biological boys who claim to identify as girls. Similarly, boys' facilities would have to be accessible to biological girls who identify as boys. And you can certainly see where uh, an issue would arise with that. Uh, there is no safe space anymore. It's just a free-for-all, co-ed for all. In the laws, decimation of equality doesn't stop there. The regulations also eliminate uh, due process protections for students accused of sexual misconduct, the right to call witnesses, introduce evidence, or be presented by counsel during an investigation and violates the First Amendment to the Constitution by forcing teachers and fellow students to use uh, a student's preferred pronouns. The regulation, like that's a funny thing, but about English and grammar class, like that must be a real uh, hoot. The regulation also requires K-12 schools to accept a child's gender identity regardless of biological sex without providing any notice to much less seeking the approval of a child's parent. And while the education department has punted, at least for the moment, on its second Title IX rule, one that applies only to athletics, the Biden administration represents representation that sports are not included in today's rule is complete head fake. By expanding the definition of sex to include gender identity and applying the rule to all extracurricular activities, male and female athletic teams will be a thing of the past. Indeed, the word athletics appears in the new rule at least 31 times, so a deliberate attempt to uh, completely destroy all of the work that women have done uh, since their suffragette movement. Unbelievable. Thank you, Joe Biden, for ruining America again. Uh, trans high schooler places second in the 200-meter girls' varsity track in Oregon, the runner would have placed 61st among male athletes, based off of the time. Let's have a look. On Saturday, a trans-identified male runner placed second in the 200-meter and 400-meter race at the Sherwood Need for Speed Classic in Sherwood, Oregon. In a video posted on X by Redux, in the first heat, sophomore Aiden Gallagher sped away from the girls and cruised to victory with an overall time of 25.49 seconds. In a later heat, Gallagher's time was beaten by winner Aster Jones. In reaction to the video, the Independent Council on Women's Sports icons noted these record-setting high school male athletes will be rewarded with women's collegiate roster spots and scholarships. Absolutely, especially with Title IX. Uh, according to Athletic Live, Gallagher's run was enough for second place and the fifth fastest time ever run in the state's girls' 200 meter. The first place finisher, Aster Jones, ran the 200 meter in 24.43 seconds, which is just shy of the state record of 24.34. In the 400 meter race, Gallagher, Gallagher also nearly set a new state record coming in second place with a 55.61. This was the fourth fastest time ever run the Oregon girls 400 meter and was over two seconds faster than the third place finisher. Winner Ellis Heslam ran the third fastest time in the 400 meter with a 55.47. In comparison, Gallagher's 200 meter time would have earned 61st place among the male athletes and 46th in the 400 meter. In 2023 interview with the Oracle, Gallagher spoke out against legislation being passed across the country to prevent minors from obtaining sex changes. I feel like it'll make me a lot more confident. Sure. Uh, right now, I'm just going to keep on getting more and more masculine. The team continued. More facial hair, stuff like that. I don't want that. Estrogen and other hormones and getting vocal training would make me a lot happier and more confident. Recent years, trans-identified athletes have become more prominent, while several states and sports bodies have banned male athletes from competing in female sports. March 16th, in March, sorry, 16 current and former college athletes filed a lawsuit against the National Collegiate Athletic Association, NCAA, for violating Title IX's guarantee of equal opportunity for males and females in college education sports. Well, they don't have to worry about that. Case dismissed because Title IX does not exist for females. New York City High School soccer game canceled after a group of about 30 migrants refused to leave the field, even after cops showed up. Well, probably going to see a lot more of this as, uh, you know, soccer is like the most popular sport in the world, especially in South America and Africa. 
And uh, as more of these migrants come, they're going to want uh, field space. And they don't care about your kids having uh, games scheduled. A high school game at a public field in East Harlem was canceled after a group of migrants refused to leave the pitch so the kids could play. I directly asked them to leave, and some of them kind of took it into consideration. But then four or five of them said, you know what? It, we don't have to leave. We can do whatever we want, said Eric Johansson, the coach of the Manhattan Kickers, 17-year-old boys travel team. About 40 boys from both teams showed up on Sunday, April 4th. Thomas and Jefferson Park at 5 p.m. match. The kickers were set to face off against the FA Euro New York. But a group of about 30 men who appeared to be African migrants and spoke little English wouldn't leave, and even when the cops showed up to resolve the conflict, the cops asked to see a copy of the club's team, the city permit. Well, why didn't they ask to see the migrants? Do you guys have a permit? No. Can you produce it? Do you guys have a permit? Yeah, we're about to produce it. Okay, case closed. When you show up with two teams in uniform, a ref and two coaches, usually nobody is asking to see your permit. Uh, by the time Johansson's assistant was able to forward a copy of the kicker's permit, the game had been delayed 30 minutes and the teams didn't feel safe. Even when the game is over, you don't know if they're waiting for you. So even if the cops kick them out, it may not be over. So we all just agreed, this is too dangerous. Let's get out of here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially with the migrants, like, mob robbing everybody, stealing purses on scooters in New York City, literally setting up, like, uh, outdoor uh, markets from all their stolen goods. Can't get rid of them, and they don't care. They're going to take their lifestyle from their poor third world country, and they're instilling it because that's all they know. And they don't care about you. They care about themselves. They're selfish. That's why they entered the country illegally, because they knew they could get some for free. I have seen this before. I know how bad it can get. Parents told him they were rattled by the incident and don't want to play on the field anymore. Johansson said they don't plan to return. Other fields like East River Park, they don't have these issues, but field space in the city is limited, and they take what they can get. It is so frustrating that the guys who refuse to follow the rules won. Maud Moran, a Soho mom whose son plays on the team, told the Post, that's the message the kids got. No matter how good you are, if you're stronger and louder, you always get what you want. All right, the media won't tell you this. They're worried about someone putting kitty porn on their computer. Members of Congress are terrified of the intelligence agency. I'm not guessing at that. They've told me that, including people on the Intel Committee, including people who run the Intel Committee, Tucker Carlson said. So yeah, he was on Joe Rogan, a very popular podcast. You don't know who that is. Wake up. And uh, yeah, guess what? He said he's talk to people who said listen man we try and do what we can do but uh you know when you get a strongly worded uh message from the uh lettered community not the lgbtq plus but the uh, intel community cia nsa fbi and they're like hey man play ball or else we'll uh, install pegasus on your computer and download a bunch of kitty porn and then we'll just raid your house like diddy microsoft vasa one can deep fake a person with one photo and one audio track all right so uh, they use YouTube videos of 6K, basically a super high quality. We film in 4K, 2166P. So 4K, I guess, is double that. Anyway, so they're able to take a single image, an audio clip, and a bunch of control signals, and boom, there you have it. You can deep fake someone. And uh, what is it? A deep fake? Well, it's basically a, a fake video of you that's very representative of reality. And what's a honeypot? Well, that's what... Uh, Basically, intel and governments, politicians, will use to trap people. Uh, it's often used uh, sexually. You'll send in a, a spy um, who will attempt to uh, have sex with you, and then they'll videotape it or get a picture of it, and then they'll present it to you and say, if you don't play ball, then we're going to show the wife, we're going to show everyone. And typically, it's uh, you know something horrible like drugs and uh, something uh, immoral. On Tuesday, Microsoft Research Asia unveiled VASA-1, an AI model that can create a synchronized animated video of a person talking or singing from a single photo in an existing audio track. In the future, it could power virtual avatars that render locally and don't require video feeds, or anyone with similar tools to take a photo of a person found online and make them appear. It paves the way for real-time engagements with lifelike avatars that emulate human conversational behaviors. Yeah, so uh, if you don't know, that's obviously going to be a huge problem, especially when Tucker's talking about, like, uh, hey, guess what? The uh, Intel community is going to jack you up with pornography, child porn on your uh, phone or your computer or your device. And now it doesn't even have to be real. They can just go ahead and create it and be like, look, we found this. They don't even have to put it on your phone. They're like, look, there's Tucker with some uh, young child. And boom, we got you. So it's very scary stuff. H1, sorry, H5N1 strain of bird flu found in milk, says the WHO. 
Uh, bird flu virus strain has been detected in very high concentrations in raw milk from infected animals, the WHO said Friday. Though how long the virus can survive in milk is unknown. Raw milk, unpasteurized. Basically, like, right out of the tit. Avian influenza A, H5N1, first emerged in 1996, but since 2020, the number of outbreaks in birds have grown exponentially alongside an increase in the number of infected animals, mammals. The strain has led to the deaths of tens of millions of poultry, uh, with wild birds and land and marine mammals also infected. Cows and goats joined the list last month. A surprising development for experts believe they were not thought to be susceptible to this type of influenza. Mutated. U.S. authorities earlier this month said a person working on a dairy farm in Texas was recovering from bird flu after being exposed to cattle. The case in Texas is the first case of a human infected by avian influenza by a cow, said Wiken Jang, head of the Global Influenza Program at the World Health Organization. Bird to cow, cow to cow, and cow to bird transmission have also been registered during these current outbreaks, which suggests that the virus may have found other routes of transition than we previously understood she told a media briefing in Geneva. It was only the second case of human testing positive for bird flu in the United States and came after the virus second herds that were apparently exposed to wild birds. Now we see multiple herds of cows affected in an increasing number of U.S. states, which shows further step of the virus spillover to mammals. The virus has also been detected in milk from infected animals. Yeah, human cases are mild. So as of right now, don't worry. But uh, it has been detected in the cows, in the milk, and uh-oh, it's spread to more farm animals. And here we know about food safety. Should you be eating it? So more than a dozen herds in eight states just weeks after the nation's largest egg producer found the virus in its chickens. Should you be eating this stuff? Should you avoid beef? Talk about the zombie virus uh, in the elk. And uh, allegedly two hunters died of that. Unconfirmed, but possible. Uh, at this time, there continues to be no concern that the circumstances pose a risk to consumer health or that it affects the safety of the interstate commercial milk supply. Don't worry about it until it's too late. Here's what you need to know about the bird flu and food. As of Friday, the strain of bird flu that has killed millions of wild birds recently has been found in at least 26 dairy herds, 8 U.S. states, Idaho, Kansas, Michigan, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Texas, and South Dakota. It's known as uh, type A, H5N1. It's been detected in a range of mammals. We covered that. So how is it affecting food production? Agricultural officials in at least 17 states have restricted imports of dairy cattle from states where the virus has been detected. But so far, government agencies say it's had little effect on commercial milk production. Officials believe cows likely have been infected by exposure to wild birds, but said cow-to-cow -cow spread cannot be ruled out. Farmers are testing cows that show symptoms of infection, including sharply reduced milk supply and lethargy, which is basically just like, you know, tired, hanging around, head low. And it'll appear to cover within two weeks. U.S. egg producers are watching the situation closely after bird flu was detected in chickens in Texas and Michigan. Millions of birds have been killed, but the FDA said the risk of affected eggs getting into the retail market or causing infections in humans is low because of federal inspections and other safeguards. Does pasteurization kill the bird flu? It's not a food safety concern. There you have it. Two people in the U.S. have been infected with the bird flu to date. A dairy worker who was in close contact with an infected cow recently developed a mild eye infection and has recovered. 22, 2022, a prison inmate in a work program caught it while killing infected birds at a Colorado poultry farm. His only symptom was fatigue and he recovered. Grocery store milk safe? Yes. So don't worry uh, until they tell you it's too late. Raw milk? They say uh, avoid it. You're not even allowed to sell that. I mean, farmers will drink it. I mean, certain states might have the uh, ability. But, I mean, there's a lot of studies saying that raw milk is, like, super full of good things, not just bad bacteria, why they pasteurize it, but it's full of all kinds of good uh, organics, and it's supposed to help clear up, like, asthma and things like that. Don't know. From what I understand, dairy causes a ton of inflammation. Almost every time I drink or uh, eat a dairy product, uh, I get mucus buildup, like, immediately. So I stay away from that stuff because it's totally... Uh, garbage, almost all food is. Comes in a box, wrapped in plastic. You should not eat it. Try to grow it yourself, people. And there you have it. We are back. Every day, five days a week. Sigma Tiger, signing out.